Right, hello there ladies and gents, welcome to another repair video. So today we're going to be working on this PS4 Pro which has been sent in and this console has been sent in because someone decided to yeet the power supply connector clean off the board. So I'll try and pair it on, I'll just show you what's going on with it and that's going to be basically nothing. But I'll just show you anyway, that it's not going to turn on and then we'll go ahead and try and get it repaired. So as you can see here, not turning on so what's happened is the customer has opened the device to try and clean it as many people do and as many people do as well they've opened it and when they've opened it they've ripped off the power supply connector so what we've got to do is most likely we've got to run some traces to try and get the power supply connector restored and the reason for that is because the power supply connector in question is the one that carries 5 volt which provides standby voltage so standby voltage is needed so as the console knows when you press the power button. So basically it can turn on the console. Without that connector, we've got nothing. So the console still technically works, but it's just got no 5 volts supply. So we're going to take it apart, but while I've got your attention, if you are new to the channel and you appreciate this type of content, I would really, really appreciate it if you hit subscribe and turn on the bell notifications. That way you don't miss any future videos. And if you want to support what I do, if you enjoy this type of content and you think I am worthy, then you can head over to Twitch. There's a link in the video description. So you can head over to Twitch. You can link your Twitch account to your Amazon Prime account and become a Twitch Prime subscriber. It's free for you, but it does give me around about $2.50 every month. And this customer has used a drill to put this console back together. It's always nice. If you're wondering why there's a bunch of random solder balls just here, I kind of spilt my solar poles yesterday while I was reboiling the chip and uh, I don't have any more so they've got to stay there until I get a new batch of solar balls. Okay, so this is going to kill my hands because someone's used a drill to put it back together which is pretty annoying. Oh, that one wasn't that bad. Actually, that one's probably ruined... Yeah, <laughs> that one's ruined the thread. But that's why you don't use a drill because it ruins the thread. Never mind. So I'll fast forward through this. I'm going to get the motherboard removed from the console. And hmm, left the sticker on. Yeah. So I'm going to get the motherboard removed from the console and I'll take it from there. Right, okay. So here we go. Got the motherboard out of the case. And it looks like they didn't continue with the cleaning because it's still absolutely filthy. So I'll clean the rest of the console a little bit later on. It has come in for overheating as well as coming in for the power supply connector. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the power supply connector done first. And then I'll take care of the overheating issue as well. Well, first of all, I am going to take off this old thermal paste here because otherwise it ends up all over the desk, it makes a big mess. I can't really say my desk is anywhere close to being clean, but I don't want thermal paste on it, that's for sure. So I'm going to get rid of it, or as much as I possibly can. There we go. Alright, so that's clean. So now I can go ahead and take care of the power supply issue. So under the microscope then, you can see the extent of the damage. And um, what we've got here is we've got the 12 volt connector just off to the side here. And then we've got this connector here, or what's supposed to be a connector, which handles the 5 volt power supply standby. So the console itself won't actually put out 12 volts until it's told to by the console. So there's, for example, we've got a five volt line here, we've got a ground here, and then we've got a couple of lines here for signaling. Uh, one of them is AC detect, and I can't remember which one the other one is, to be honest. But basically it needs these four connections to be able to make a contact with the power supply. And then when you turn the power supply on, the console will tell the power supply that it's time to turn on and then the console will output 12 volts. So nothing's going to work without this. So what we need to do is 
we need to first of all expose these points here. So you can see here, you can actually see where the trace is meant to go. Um, we need to expose the end point, which is going to be these wires here. So wires are basically a pathway to the other side of the board or to another layer inside the board. The motherboards are made up of several layers, sometimes between 8 and 16 layers. And wires are there to basically create a pathway from one side of the board to another layer or to the bottom of the board. So by exposing this here, we're basically creating a new pad. But we can't actually solder to that pad because the connector wouldn't fit. So what we need to do is we need to run a couple of jumper wires and jump from the wire to the point where the pin can reach the wire. So the original connector is here. It sits like this. So this is how it's meant to sit on the board. And basically you can see on the connector that the traces are missing. We can't reattach those traces, but we can remove them from this connector and then basically solder some jumper wires to the connector pins and then to the respective wires. So the first two pads are absolutely fine, which is cool. That means we don't have to run those jumpers. But what we need to do, we also need to create a point where we can anchor the connector down. So what I do, I used to just run a couple of jumper wires from the top to the bottom and then give that a place for it to anchor to. But what I do now is I use a little bit of solder braid and I basically create a brand new pad. And most of the time it's going to come out better than what it did before it was broken. So I expose the copper around the edge of the trace which is damaged. In this case, this is a ground. Just expose it all the way around. And that's going to allow me to solder to that point. So this is all ground which I'm scratching the conformal coating away from. doesn't matter if you expose a little bit too much because it's not going to be touching anything anyway. I'm going to do the same with this one. Just using my X-Acto knife to scrape that conformal coating away. And the brown stuff underneath, what you can see there, is called a substrate. So basically the substrate is a separating layer between the top layer and the layer below. And there's a substrate between every single layer. If there wasn't then the layers would short out and that would cause other issues. So we don't want to damage that substrate because we don't know what is on the other layer. So I think it's ground, but we don't know for sure. So I'm not going to be damaging that substrate if I can help it. Okay, that's enough to solder to. So what I want to do now is just clean up. So I'm going to use a little bit of isopropyl alcohol, get rid of that little bit of dust that's on the motherboard. We don't want to solder that with any kind of contaminant around it. So just use a bit of isopropyl alcohol just to clean that up. Try and gather up those little bits of the cotton swab as well. There we go. Alright, so with that all done, and with the board almost clean, just try and get rid of that. There we go. So with that done, it's time to move on to the next step. So I'm left-handed, which means my life is going to be easier if I start from left to right. So I'm just going to dry that IPA away using warm air. And then I'm going to start off by adding some flux. So you always want to add flux when you're soldering because it's going to help the solder to flow. I'll add some flux all the way over. And then those exposed points which I've just created, I'm going to tin those so as it's ready to accept some jumper wires. So I'll take some leaded solder. And I'm just going to create a place to solder to by tinning the exposed copper. Doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm going to do the same for these wires. So just tin those. There we go. And the same for this here as well, this ground pad. So what I want to do now is, like I said, I need to create some new pads where I'm going to be able to anchor the connector to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some solder braid and I've got some 0.8mm braid. So this is pretty fine stuff. 
and I'm just going to create an anchor point by soldering the braid directly to the board. I'm just going to hold that there while I grab my solder. And you can see what I'm doing here, I think. Or hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Hopefully you can understand my thought process. Let's break that away. 1.5 millimeter solder braid would be better. Unfortunately, I don't have any. So I'll just double up on it. Just double up on the solder braid and that basically gives me, you know, 1.6 millimeters. Hold it in place while I let go. And there you go. So what that's done there is that's just basically created an anchor point where I can solder to. I'll just trim that away. And basically when I put the connector on now, it's going to give me somewhere to drop the side anchor points to and solder those two. And it should make a nice solid connection. I first tried this a few months ago now and it's worked every single time. So before I move on to the other anchor point, I want to put some jumper wires in place for the other two pins. So that's going to be this pin just here. It's a little bit difficult to see. That's going to be that one there. I'm going to pop some solder onto the iron. And the one thing we want to make sure of is that the jumper wire that we're putting down isn't going to be shorting out to ground. Okay, let's get rid of some of that burnt flux off there. Well, that's one of the problems with running jumper wires is it doesn't take much to burn the flux that's there. And once you burn the flux, you can't really see what you're doing. So what I'm going to do is just trim this wire just at the end, like that. And then I'm going to move on to the next one. So I'm going to tin the end of that one and solder it down in place. Add some solder to the iron and make sure it's nice and solid. There we go. Just trim that again. That's good. And that's it for the jumper wire. So what I need to do now is just tin these two pads. So the two pads that are there, which is the ground and the actual five volt connection, I need to tin those and prep those for some new connectors or rather for the connector to go back on there we go and i'm also going to need to tin the end of the jumper wire so i'm going to hold it down and just scrape it with the iron hold that one down scrape it with the iron so the reason i do that is because i don't want it to come disconnected so I'll just hold it down, make sure it's not going to go anywhere while I'm using the iron on it. And there we go. So that's that. I'm just going to melt a little bit of this flux so I can see a little bit better. That looks absolutely fine. So now I can move on to this last point, which is going to be this end ground point. I'm going to hold that down in place. Make sure it's tinned both sides. Add some solder to it. And that creates a pad. Break it off. Again, making sure that it's not shorting out to the pin next to it. We definitely don't want to short between the ground point and the 5 volt line. And this one, I don't think I actually need to create that second pad. I think it's narrow enough to the point where I can just use 1.8 millimeter. So that's done. So I'm going to heat this up because otherwise I'm not going to be able to clean it up properly. So I'm going to heat it up and melt the flux. And then I'm going to take a toothbrush with some isopropyl alcohol and I'm going to scrub it away. I'm going to go with the direction of the jumper wire because I don't want to end up ripping the jumper wire off and damaging the wire. But I'm basically going to just clean up all of this flux now and get it ready for soldering the connector. I'm going to heat that up. Just warming it up just so as I can get to the rest of the flux. The stuff that didn't quite get there. Go with the direction again. So I'm going from top to bottom with the direction of those two jumper wires. The two pads are not too bad. They're not going anywhere, but the jumper wires would if I didn't be careful. Let's just dry that off. Okay. 
Um, what I want to do before I actually drop the connector back on is just secure out this jumper wire in place. So I've got some conformal coating. So this is basically a glue for PCBs. And I'm just going to drop a little bit just there. Just like that. And I'm actually going to drop a little bit more just here to help it become as secure as I can possibly get it. Well, secure as I could possibly get it would be to cover the entire thing in solder mask, but that's just pointless, I suppose. As long as it's secure, it's fine. You don't necessarily have to do this. It's not really going to go anywhere. But now I'm going to take a UV pen and just cure this using UV light. So the UV mask I use is Mechanic UVH900. You can find it on eBay for around about three to four pound or five dollars for a syringe and it should last you a very long time for one syringe i don't think i've bought conformal coating for over a year now so it should last you a fairly long time if you do buy it okay so around about a minute in total underneath the uv light and that should be nice and solid And it is. And as you can see, if I bend that jumper wire now, only the part down here is bending. Same with that one. And that is perfect. All right, so there's one more thing I need to do before I can use this connector again, and that's going to be to get rid of these old traces so as I can solder out the jumper wires to them. So all I'm going to do for that is just use the iron. I'm going to heat it up and it'll desolder from the board. Sorry, not from the board, from the uh, connector. Okay, and we are ready to pop this connector back on. So what I want to do then is just get it lined up first of all, so as it's in the right position, and that's going to be just there. So you can see it's lined up with the pins, and the first thing I need to do is just tack it down. So I'll just secure it temporarily in place and then I'm going to turn the board around so as I can access the other side on left hand if you remember. Uh, I'm going to push down on the connector and tack it down that side as well. So now I can add some flux. Let's add some that side. And what I need to do now is basically just keep on pushing down on the connector and soldering each side until it sits nice and flat on the board. It doesn't have to be completely flat as long as I can make a contact with the pins, but I want it as flat and as close to factory as I can. So I'm just going to keep on tapping each side. And I think that's nice and secure, but I am going to add some solder to it on each side. So what I'll do is I'll heat the pin and the solder braid that I've used as a pad at the same time. And that'll flow solder to all of it at the same time. Same with this. There we go. Just make sure we get enough solder there. And now it should start to sit down. There we go. So that's nice and solid. And now I can come in and do the pins. So these jumper wires, I need to make sure I get a contact with them. Okay, and that should be done. So I'm going to heat this up again. So the reason I heat it up is because flux hardens when it cools down and it makes it difficult to clean off. It cleans off a lot easier when it's warm. So it's a little bit lopsided, but that's absolutely fine. It doesn't matter if it's a little bit 1K. It's kind of my signature move, I suppose. You know I've been in here when it's kind of 1K. As long as it's functional, as long as it actually does the job that it's intended to do, then it's absolutely fine. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to just make sure that we've got a good contact on the pins. So what I'll do is I'll pop one probe on here, the multimeter's in continuity mode. Pop one probe there, pop another probe there, and we'll get a contact, which means that is connected. And the same with that one. This one should be a ground, so it should be connected to all of these pads here. 
and this one is 5 volt. There we go, beautiful. We've got a contact on all pins, and this job is done. Just give those two a nudge test. Those ones, the wire should move with the pin. And let's just give the connector the wiggle test. Perfect. Beautiful. And that should be pretty much that. So let's just put a few things away. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some fresh thermal paste to this. Just like that. Beautiful. So fresh thermal paste, and then what I need to do as well is clean up inside the housing. So I'll do that off camera. I just need to get rid of the thermal paste and get rid of any dust that might be inside as well because that hasn't been done. All right, so let's just drop the board in. Uh, no, let's not. Let's put the screws back in first. Come on, Phil, you know better than this. We've got a screw there. Not held in by much. And we've got a screw there. Drop the board back in there. And I'm going to go full ham and put this back together because it should be working. Don't usually put these back together until. I know it works, but it should be working fine. Every time I do this, it bites me in the ass. So, yeah, we'll see in a minute. Okie dokie, there we go. So, most of that's back together. I just need to pop the power supply in. And the reason I left this till last is because I want to show you how I safely remove the power supplies. So, when the power supply is in, when I'm trying to disassemble the device, so let's say, for example, the power supply is connected and you go to lift it up. This is why it snaps. Because, number one, this is always too tight, this connector, uh, from the factory. And number two, because the cable is short and people don't expect it. So what I do is, when I lift it up, I let the tension, or I let my hand follow the tension. So if you follow the tension, it's going to naturally want to go to the right. And then I'll just take the power supply connector from inside the snag catch and just disconnect that side and then I'll just thread that through the hole and it stops you from damaging the power supply connector and that's how I'll safely remove them so it might work differently for you you might have a different method but personally that's how I do it and that's what I've found works best for me I've never personally damaged one of those connectors apart from once when I was on a live stream, not concentrating, and basically I ended up turning the power turning the console over. So I put the power supply in. I turned the console over, and the power supply fell out because I forgot to screw it down. That's the only time I've ever damaged the connector on these uh, power supplies. But we've all done it, I'm sure. There we go. Nice straightforward job. I've been recording for 53 minutes from start to finish, disassembly and reassembly, and including talking to you guys. So it always takes longer on video. I can usually do these in around about 30 to 35 minutes from start to finish if I'm not talking. Let's just hook it up to the cables and let's see if it turns on. There we go. I can feel the fan spinning and the blue light is on. So that should go to a white light now, hopefully, as long as nothing else is wrong. But while we're waiting for that, Let's turn on the TV. It is indeed on a white light, and there we go. We have a display. So this is working absolutely fine, and this job is done. So just to summarize then, this console was originally taken apart by the owner for cleaning, and unfortunately, he decided that the connector doesn't deserve to be on the board. So that's not his choice to make. Well, it actually is, it's his console, but never mind. Uh, yeah, so by, by running a couple of jumper wires, and basically restoring those connections this console works and it's as simple as that it's not a difficult job to do with a little bit of experience and if you're not experienced just a little bit of patience and a little bit of willingness to learn so anyone can do it if they are determined enough uh, a little bit of practice and it's a job that pretty much anyone can do at home it's not a difficult task and it's quite uh, 
it's quite satisfying to see the end result. So let me know what you think down in the comments down below. I will always do my best to answer. I enjoy reading comments from you guys and it gives me something to do in between jobs. So basically what I'll do in a minute is I'll grab my phone, which is right there. So on the way back to put this console back into the pile to go back to Console Repair London, I'll grab my phone, I'll have a look at some messages, some notifications and see what kind of things that people have been saying. Let's read a couple on the video. Why not? So go to my youtube studio and repair shop botched ps5 hdmi port great job good video adrian pierce thank you mate uh there we go joey does tech commented three minutes ago man i had the exact same issue as this with the one you sent me it must be quite a common fault on the original xbox one he's referring to the last video that i posted uh well i did a challenge with wayne's new repairs uk joey does tech is a great youtuber Check him out, link in the description, same as Wayne. Uh, but yeah, there we go. I will reply to those comments in a minute if I don't break my phone in the process. But that's going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you do have any comments or questions, like I said, leave them down in the comments section down below. I do always read every single comment. Every comment I get, I read. And just because I don't reply to them all, it doesn't mean I don't read them all. I just don't get time to reply to them all. So if you do have any comments or questions, leave them down in the comment section down below. And I'll do my best to get back to you. If you do want to organise your own repair, you can do so by using the website address in the video description where you can see a price list of the common repairs. You can book in the job for a repair or you can get in touch using the contact page. If you enjoy this type of content and you want to see more, then be sure to hit the subscribe button just down below the video and turn on the bell notifications so that you're notified whenever I release a video. If you think I'm worthy and you think you want to support the channel, then there'll be some direct donation links in the video description. There will be a Patreon link in the video description. There'll be a channel membership. So if you click on the join button down below the video, you can become a channel member. Um, Patreon members and channel members get early access to videos. And you can also head over to Twitch and you can become a Twitch Prime subscriber by linking your Twitch Prime account and subscribing to my channel. So that's going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. And until next time, I'll see you later. Bye for now.